What is going on everybody? I am back with another X and Y Wi-Fi battle. This time it's a battle I had against Mian Shanes. He asked me for battle on Skype, so I was like, okay. And uh, yeah, no team preview for this one just because I really didn't feel like making it. And yeah. So, uh, gonna lead off with my Digger Speed this game because I looked at his team. He didn't really have anything that could be a designated lead. So I figured, hey, I'll lead off with Digger Speed, just U-turn on whatever he wants to lead off with or just go for whatever move. And uh, he ends up leading off with his Gudra. Uh, getting off the return on that. Don't crit him. If I would have gone for a return, I probably would have killed him. But uh, either way, just gonna go into my my Togi kiss because Togi kiss. I'm pretty sure he could take any hit this thing wants to throw me. Gonna go for the air slash right here, figuring that he will go into either his Entei or his Nidoqueen Queen to resist the dazzling gleam. So I'm gonna go for the air slash. Managed to catch the Entei on the switch. Score a crit on him, which really pretty much makes this Entei pretty useless. But I uh, don't want to take a Flare Blitz, Sacred Fire, Stone Edge, whatever this thing was to go for. I just don't want to take a hit from this thing. So I'm going to go into my Tyranitar to take a hit. He ends up going for Sacred Fire, which is kind of an underwhelming move, this gen. Like, I'm not going to lie, it's really underwhelming. But uh, just going to set up my Stealth Rocks here because I really have nothing to fear from this Entei. And Stealth Rocks, hey, it's extra damage, so whatever works. So he's going to go for the... Sacred Fire again, because I'm pretty sure he's Choice Banded. And he's just going to get the burn on that second one, which kind of sucks. But at the same time, it's like, okay, I, Tyranitar is really not going to help me against a good chunk of his team. So it's just like, okay, Tyranitar is just here, his Death Fodder, set up rocks, whatever. So I'm going to go for the Pursuit right here as he ends up switching out his Entei, because I didn't want him to keep his Entei for later. Even though the rocks are up and Entei would die on the switch in, he could still bring it on whatever to get a safe switch into something. Could have brought in on Diggersby, because, with Diggersby or Delphox, because those are both my choice Pokemon. Could have brought in on one of those, let it die, see what I lock myself into, that kind of shenanigans. But ends up going into his Nidoking. King. 3 for 3 on the Shinies on his part, but Shiny Nidoking. King, oh my god so cool this gen just because the blue is darker it's, it's a lot it's a lot nicer but again it goes my digger spear here gonna go for the u-turn i actually get a crit on whatever uh yeah i went for the u-turn figuring that he would switch out to his chestnut to take a earthquake because i don't know why he would want to leave his Nidoking king in against uh, diggersby but he ends up predicting that goes into goes for the sludge wave predicting my switch into toe kiss to avoid an earth power so, hey, I'm, at least I now know that he's life orb instead of choice scarfed. So, yeah. And he was just going to go for the return, take out the Nidoking. King. In comes Milotic. I know there's no way for me to one-shot this Milotic with a return from almost full health. So, I'm going to go with my him on top just to hopefully get some damage off on this thing. And kind of just as a pivot switch just because him on top really don't have much for... Like, I, I really can't really use him on top for a lot of his team since most of his remaining attack or Pokemon are special. And Chestnut, I know that it's his... Chestnut is physically defensive, so... Yeah. Anywho, most of the battle he was... Or the first chunk of the battle he was complaining about, oh, you, you keep on getting all the crits and stuff. I need some hacks. Well, he freezes me on the switching with Ice Beam. But, thankfully, he actually goes for the Scald and thaws me out. And, for those of you who don't know, Scald will thaw out Frozen Pokemon, just like every other Fire-type move. So, uh, he thaws me out. I go for a Toxic. Now, this is kind of... That was kind of one of my misplays this game. I made, like, three. I'm going to say three misplays. Uh, first one, uh, going for, went for the Toxic. I should have gone for the Close Combat right there, because later in the game is where that kind of comes into play. But go for the close combat as he ends up switching into his Malamar right here. Do about 50% of this thing, which is really nice. Gonna go for mock punches right here just because I'm like, I honestly don't know what Malamar's speed is. I don't know if he's faster than me. Like, I just don't know the base speed of Malamar. I know it's like not fast, but it's not really slow. So I'm going for mock punches here, just uh, hoping, like, hey. Maybe I could get some extra damage off on this thing, and this thing won't do much, but turns out he is Resto Chesto, so he will go for the rest right here. Thankfully, he didn't get any superpowers off, which would be bad for me, because then he'd be at, like, plus one with full HP. But right here, right here, I should have gone for the Mach Punch, and that Mach Punch 
would have helped me on this next turn. I also, I, I went for close combat on that right there, in case you couldn't tell. But uh, if I had gone for the Mach Punch, then this U-turn right here would have killed. I even ran Calx and everything. Mach Punch would have done just enough for U-turn to kill Malamar at plus one defense. And I know that he's max HP. So uh, because of the fact that I didn't go for the Mach Punch, I'm going to have to switch something in to die from this thing. And I'm going to be end up... It's going to end up being my Delphox, which sucks. I probably should have brought my Gorgeist in to die instead of Delphox. But, um, yeah. So, going to go into Diggersby now. Going to U-turn, kill that thing off, and decide to go into my Gorgeist now. Because, look at the rest of his team. He has my Lodic, he has Gor or Gudra, and he has Chestnut. So, I, had, I have my Diggersby and my Gorgeist left. Now... The Pokemon I have left, I like during the battle. I was thinking, okay, I have the po I have what I need to win. It's just if I play it right. So Gujar is gonna go for the Fire Blast. I actually managed to live it, so that's cool. I still don't know what item this is. I think it's Choice Specs. I don't know. I feel like it's Salt Vest. Whatever. I either way, I just managed to live the Fire Blast, get the Leech Seed off, get some extra recovery, which is great. Gonna go into my Diggersby because I figured, okay, Gorgas was able to live a Fire Blast from that Googer, so Diggersby should be also be able to live it. But he's also gonna expect me to switch out, so it goes into his Chestnut. Uh, decided to just go for a U-turn here because I didn't want to hard switch into my my Gorgas because I know that I have just enough HP to get up a sub. And if he goes for a wood hammer on my predicted switch, or just any attacking move that will hit me on the predicted switch, then I won't have enough for a sub, and I kind of want to have a sub up. But go for the U-turn as he spiky shields, get some extra damage, whatever. Uh, sped this part up, in case you couldn't tell. I honestly couldn't tell that I, when I started to speed it up. But uh, going to go for a sub on the switch out into Gujar. I went for sub because I was unsure maybe he does have a move to hit me with. If he does, then it shouldn't be able to hit Gorgeist too hard. A sub should be able to live it. But I went for sub because if he did also want to switch out into his Gujar, I could see what he wants to go for. I could get a safe Leech Seed off and then safely switch into my Digger's Beep. Uh, so that's pretty much what happens. I see that he's going for Dragon Pulse, and I'm once again I'm not too sure if he's locked into it or not. But uh, right here, I'm just gonna go back into my Digger's Beak because I'm pretty sure I could take a Dragon Pulse, which he does go for again, and I do manage to live it. And I'm pretty sure I just kill this thing off with a return because at this point, I'm pretty sure it's his game because. Return won't be able to take out the Milotic, and he still has his Chestnut left. Um, Chestnut honestly wasn't too big of a problem because I do, do still have Gorgeist, which, like I said before, Chestnut ch doesn't really have anything to hit Gorgeist with. But uh, right here, uh, way back when I went for the Toxic with him on top on this thing, if I had have gone for the Close Combat over the Toxic, there was a decent chance, like, depending on this, if the Melodic was physically or specially defensive. I want to say it's specially defensive, since he has a physically defensive chestnut. But if it was specially defensive, if I had gone for the close combat on the on the Melodic over the Toxic, then close combat would have done enough damage to that thing where Return from Diggersby would have taken it out. So, I don't know. But either way, it was his game. And misplays on my part kind of suck, but oh well. But uh, yeah, so hope you guys did enjoy this battle. If you did, feel free to leave comments down below. Also, people really seem to like my showdown live, so I will be doing those more often. And yeah, so anyways, oh, with all that stuff being said, thanks for watching, and peace.